Revenge against society. It's time for us to talk about a serious topic for once on this channel. Enough with all the fun, interesting and happy things that I talk about all the time. Today we're talking about revenge attacks against society. And this is a big problem in China and it has reared its ugly head in a crazy way over the past couple of weeks. So what is a revenge against society attack, you might ask? Well, it's exactly how it sounds. It's when somebody gets fed up, they feel like they've been downtrodden, they feel like they've been treated unfairly, and they lash out like a spoilt child. And the way they normally do this is by taking a knife and stabbing children in China. It's I'm not making this up. This is a common occurrence in China. School children, kindergarten children, middle school children, doesn't matter. They're all targeted. But children is the main target. If not children, it will be colleagues or just random members of society in a shopping mall or wherever. You can consider them kind of domestic terrorism attacks. The sole purpose of these attacks is for the individual to take out his frustration on society. Now this is a disgusting phenomenon and it has reared its ugly head recently in a big way in China and I thought we'd go through some of the stories. One of them where a university professor actually killed a Communist Party secretary in his university and some people are calling him a hero for it. It just shows you that there is an underlying distrust and hatred for the government in China. In a society where you're not allowed to protest, in a society where you cannot actually air your grievances out in the open without fear of reprisal from the government, and I mean in a big way, if you were to go and complain online about something that the government deems inappropriate, you will simply be detained, you will be shut up, you will be completely silenced. So resentment builds up and builds up and builds up and finally manifests itself in these disgusting attacks. And like I said, these people usually prey on the weak, the vulnerable and the unprepared. Let's quickly browse through some of the things that have happened recently. And don't worry, I will blur out and censor any of the bad stuff. I do not want to shock you. You can look it up yourself if you're interested to find out more. So let's start out with the 22nd of May in 2021. Now, in Dalian, which is up in Liaoning province, a uh, very interesting place. I've been there myself. A uh, fairly sophisticated uh, big city. We had a situation where a BMW drove into a crowd of people. Now, this was brutal. There was a group of pedestrians crossing the street on a pedestrian crossing, and this guy drove his BMW at high speed, right smack bang into the middle of the crowd. He instantly killed five people and injured five more. Now, what's the reason for him doing something like this? Well, the piece of shit had lost money on a peer-to-peer -peer lending scheme. That's it. He lost money. Now, do you understand why the Chinese government put so much time and effort into trying to maintain social harmony in China? It's because this sort of thing happens. They are deadly afraid of people losing their money, of people getting upset, because the, the, the people in China have been so coddled by their government all this time and all the bullshit that the government feeds them, that if they suddenly wake up to the real life, the real experience of life, where you do lose out sometimes, they don't know how to handle it. And like a spoiled child, they lash out. And this is why the Chinese government spends so much time and effort censoring the news, stopping people from hearing about things that are bad around them, because they do not want more of these attacks. And they specifically do not want people coordinating and perhaps attacking the government. So, of course, he lost out. He took out his frustrations by driving into random strangers, vulnerable people walking on the road, men, women, children. Next, something kind of similar, this time in Nanjing. On the 29th of May, in some very disturbing footage, which, of course, I can't show you, a man drove over his ex-wife uh, with his car, and, of course, nobody stepped in to help at first, and so he managed to drive over her a second time. After driving over his wife, injuring various other bystanders, he stole another car and had another accident, injuring more people. One heroic man did step in to try and stop him. The guy looks like a big, heavyset, thug-looking man, which is what you need in a situation like this. He jumped in and tried to pull the guy out of his car, but was stabbed multiple times because the guy had a knife. Knives in China are a big deal. It's scary. Knife crime is rampant. So the guy got stabbed multiple times, 
injured very badly, and the guy, of course, ran around doing his usual revenge on society. Nonsense. All right, now we have to unfortunately move on to something that's worse. Like I mentioned in the beginning, usually these disgusting, despicable people that are frustrated with society, they go after children. Now, on the 30th of May, in Hunan province, a man killed five pupils in the subway, and he almost decapitated one of them. The video footage is too shocking for me to show you, so I will not be showing that to you. It's disgusting because you have young, innocent children playing in the subway and a man just walks up behind them and slashes their necks with a knife, and it's disgusting. And this is the lowest, most despicable thing that a human being can do, is to go and kill innocent children. Anyway, that's Chinese societal revenge. And you know what? Since I made that video, what, about a year or so ago, maybe two years ago, about the child kindergarten stabbing phenomenon in China, there have been multiple more since then. So, of course, you know, you go look at the comments on that video of mine, you've got a lot of people defending China saying, oh yeah, what about America? There's gun violence there. There's school shootings in America. Guess what, guys? There's a big difference between a peer-on-peer -peer attack there's nothing excusable about it. The school shootings are despicable and everyone knows they're a problem. And this is the big difference. When there's a school shooting in America, everybody talks about it. Everybody condemns it. There's not a single person trying to justify school shootings because, oh, there are stabbings in China. Nothing like that. It's disgusting. But this is usually a situation of peer-on-peer -peer violence. We're talking about a student who's disgruntled, maybe he didn't get the girl, maybe he's an incel, maybe he has mental problems, whatever, and access to guns, which, quite frankly, is a big problem in, in America. I am going to say that right now. People of an adolescent age, young men, should not have access to firearms, especially not AR-15s or anything like that. What are you doing at that age, owning a firearm? It's different where I'm from. You need to have police training and all that kind of thing before you're allowed to get a gun. It's a different story. But anyway, that's a different thing to talk about. So the school shootings are usually a student going into the school and killing other students. Completely disgusting, horrible, immoral behavior. But in China, it's usually an adult going and attacking students. It's even worse because now you're dealing with an adult who's supposed to be a protector of children going in and killing innocent young children. You know, on the subject of children, how about May 24th? This is in Hebei province. An attacker stabbed and hacked three students outside a school while the students were returning to school in the morning and then rushed into campus afterwards. He was apprehended. But again, here you go. A piece of shit guy trying to take revenge on society goes and attacks children, attacks students, this time a middle school. You know... Um, there is no excuse for this, and if any Chinese nationalists out there would like to try and tell me that it's okay that this guy or these guys are attacking children because America has gun violence, you can go fuck yourself. That's not how it works. Attacking children is not excusable under any circumstances whatsoever, and I don't care who you are, what your nationality is, what your race is, you don't do it. All right, how about the 17th of May? This time a woman, and this is kind of rare. It's usually a, a man taking uh, revenge on society in China, but this time it's a woman, and uh, this is in Shanghai this time. She walked into a commercial building on Jiangsu Road and attacked five people with a knife. Again, these knife attacks in China are scary, and if anyone knows anything about knife attacks and gun attacks and all that kind of thing, knives are scary, scary stuff. They're personal. You get in real close to stab people. It's a different situation than a gun. You can just... Stand at a distance and shoot someone. It's very impersonal. But to actually go up to people and stab them directly, it takes a different kind of a situation. It's a different kind of thing. It's a lot more scary. Now, just ha just yesterday on the 6th of June, um, this was in... Uh, I'm, I'm filming this on the, uh, the 8th of June US time right now. So it would be this... Yeah, it, in China, it would have been yesterday. 6th of June, um, this time in Anhui province, a man with a knife attacked random people on a walking street, you know? They call these buxing jie. It's a, it's a walking street, usually a place where people go to have street food and buy clothing, and it's kind of a vibrant part of a, the cities or towns. So a man went there and randomly attacked uh, people, just 
going around doing their shopping and stuff. He killed five people, injured 15 more people. Another one of these revenge on society attacks. I mean, come on. So much for a stable, safe, harmonious society. You know, the problem with this stuff as well is that the news gets scrubbed very often. When these things happen, it's downplayed, it's hidden as much as possible. Like I said, because you do not want word of these things going out. They do not want uh, the harmony and stability of society affected by these things that happen all the time. Now, the final one that I'm going to talk about, and I promise you this is not going to be the last. It, we've seen a massive uptick in these kind of events recently in these uh, revenge attacks and so on. Is about the university professor. His name is Jiang Wenhua. Now, Jiang Wenhua is, or I should say was, the associate professor of mathematics, the Department of Mathematics at Fudan University in Shanghai. Again, I remember Shanghai is China's most sophisticated city. This is where the intellectuals go. This is where all the foreigners go. This is uh, the shining jewel of China, and it's always put out there to the world. So just remember, this is not happening in some backwater somewhere. This is happening in the best and biggest and brightest cities of China. So what happened? Well, every university has what's called a CCP party secretary, and their job, their sole job, is to ensure that teachers and students remain loyal to the Communist Party of China. That's their only job. You can imagine they're not very popular now, are they? They're kind of like snitches for the government. And what they do is they sit around there and, and pop their heads in and uh, sit in all the meetings and make sure everyone's towing the party line and everyone's doing exactly what the Chinese Communist Party wants them to do. And if there's anyone maybe talking a little bit about democracy or something, he makes sure that uh, they get a knock on the door from the police, that kind of thing. So they're not very popular people. Now, apparently, the Communist Party secretary here, his name was uh, Wang Yongzhen. So apparently, Mr. Wang had a problem with Mr. Jiang and was purposefully preventing him from being promoted to the next level. Now, apparently, Mr. Jiang, he graduated from Yale, he had a big career, and he left America to come back to China in order to teach here because he saw there was a great opportunity. But he was supposedly lied to, that's what he says anyway, because they kept pushing him down. This Mr. Wang guy kept preventing him from achieving his promotions and, and furthering himself in the university. And so they came to loggerheads. And apparently this one guy wanted him fired. So what did he do? He bought a knife online, went into the university and killed him. Simple. Slit his throat. There we go. Now, there's been a bit of a mixed reception. Obviously, everyone condemns this murder, but a lot of support for him has been pouring out on the internet because there is a lot of resentment that builds up against these party members, these lower level party members who rule the roost and walk around as if they are a dictator judge, jury, executioner, and that they are the, the, the be-all and the end-all of everything, and the be-all and the end-all of the party. So it's kind of an interesting thing to see the discourse online of how some people are supporting him for killing this guy. Of course, nobody should be supporting murder. It's disgusting, but it's just interesting to see this. So just a quick recap over here. All of these incidents happened within three weeks, from the 17th of May till the 8th of June. And these are not all of the incidents that happened either. These are just the more notable ones that have actually made it into the news and have had to be reported on. There's a lot going on and it's happening all over China. It's not one specific area, as you can see from the map here. You know, China does have a very big issue. And there's a lot of tension bubbling just beneath the surface. And all it's going to take for China to really erupt into chaos is for some kind of economical downturn or something that ends up affecting everybody in a negative way. Something that the government cannot back down away from by simply pointing a finger at America and saying, oh, but America does that or it's the foreigner's fault. And we're seeing this now. We've seen a lot of attacks recently, and you can pretty much be guaranteed that it's all due to the fact that a lot of promises by the government have not been fulfilled. A lot of people's dreams are not coming to fruition. A lot of the sunshine that's been blown up their asses for so long about how amazing China is, how powerful it is, how much money everyone's going to earn, how much everything is great and going up, simply isn't true. So, unfortunately, we might have to brace ourselves for more of these attacks and these revenge against society attacks in the near future. I sincerely hope that each and every one of my Chinese friends and all citizens of China can stay safe 
from these lunatics which lurk amongst you. And if you are one of those people who are thinking of, I don't know, lashing out at society by killing small children, how about you just go hand yourself in at the local police station? I'm pretty sure they'll uh, take care of you. Well, whenever there's a pole dancer, you know I'm going to be talking to you guys about how much I appreciate your support. No, seriously though. You know, this video obviously cannot be monetized. Whenever I talk about these very serious topics in China, they get demonetized. And that's a way that YouTube and specifically China by flagging my videos, the Chinese 50 Cent Army, etc. They flag my videos, they go all out to try and stop me from putting out this kind of content. That's how they win. I find myself very often wondering if I should or should not cover a topic because I'm worried about it getting demonetized. And since YouTube is my livelihood, it's very tempting to actually not cover sensitive topics like this. But I have a moral imperative here to cover these. And the only reason that I can do these kind of topics and continue down this path is because of people like you who support me, whether it be through Patreon or through any other means. I appreciate every single one of you guys. Thank you so much for making it possible, and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Anyway, guys, um, sorry for having a serious video. I know this channel is usually all about rainbows and sunshine, and, you know, we're always having a good laugh and a happy time here. But uh, until next time, don't be one of these disgusting, immoral people, and uh, stay awesome.